Hello, I'm Michelle Pearson. First, thank you for giving an opportunity to apply for this amazing fellowship in a format that's accessible to someone with very limited administrative support. Quick story, I think I moved 10 times before I was eight years old. And so when we ended up in a small town outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, my mother kind of felt I needed to connect to some sort of community and signed me up for a modern dance class. That began a journey. I ended up majoring in dance uh, on scholarship in college in Eastern North Carolina and immediately, you know, after the American Dance Festival kind of moved to New York. I worked with Doris Humphrey Company, American Dance Ensemble, and a bunch of off-Broadway off stuff. And I thought that was where my life was headed and just realized I something was missing. Uh, the stars aligned. I auditioned for Liz Lerman Dance Exchange in the late 90s and ended up moving to DC and working full-time uh, in Liz Lerman's core company for many years. Uh, the takeaway from the work with Liz Lerman, we challenged the stigma and stereotypes of every single day of who gets to dance, where was dance happening, what we were dancing about, and the fourth thing that um, planted a seed deep inside of me that has been the, my work for the past 20 years was the question of, uh, does dance matter? That has been where I've been wanting and creating firsthand encounters in the world of witnessing and participating in dance that is transformative, that changes not only the stories I get to hear, but the way I get to hear my own stories in relationship to others. Um, in North Carolina, when I moved back here, I was nominated to be part of a leadership network, a fellowship of leaders across the state who their purpose was to engage across a uh, divide and improve the human relations for all North Carolinians. A I thought, what am I doing here? Because mostly it was lawyers and legislators early on. By the time I'd finished the fellowship, I thought, why are there not more artists in this room? There needs to be more artists if we truly want to improve human relations and for all North Carolinians or actually all people. Coming out of the two-year fellowship, I've been on a personal mission, not just to elevate that like the expectations of modern dance but truly advance the outcomes in transformative ways we have some incredibly complex problems that require the best artists to help solve these and in the most human way possible i'm happy to say that not only was i asked to be on the board but i was chair of the board and a part of their programming and doing a great job of getting more artists in the circle in looking at the question about community engagement and belonging, I am from North Carolina. I left for a few years and then I came back and kind of picked back up in that dancer world that I had been in. The Friday Fellowship, that leadership network that I was a part of for two years, uh, changed the trajectory of my work. That commitment there to be a part of a network that was looking at collaborative and courageous leadership that was just and equitable um, uh, was something that I wanted to bring my art and my art making toward. So I began, that's when it, Black Box Dance Theater was created. I wanted to work in my own state, and this is why I have it on my t-shirt, um, not just in the, in the populated areas, but in the nooks and crannies. Uh, so Black Box is a non-for-profit, uh, non-fiction, modern dance company. And we have been, we're on a roster with the North Carolina Arts Council, really going to Title I counties. These are rural places of North Carolina. It's really my favorite place to be. So Black Fox has found ourselves from working at an alternative high school in the western part of the state to working with uh, senior citizens and kids and Special Olympians in the great dismal swamp to the east. Given that it is North Carolina, we have also found ourselves working with the military and a lot of military families. We were asked to go down to Fort Bragg, which is now Fort Liberty, an army base, and lead a workshop around uh, peer support, storytelling, and suicide prevention. And we were thinking, <laughs> what can this little dance company possibly do? And that was in 2016. Those two hours were incredibly powerful and had led to the next eight years of us doing work with active duty military 
not just at Fort Liberty, but at Camp Lejeune and Seymour Johnson with our National Guard, and even more so with veterans. North Carolina has the fourth largest veteran population in America with the majority of them living in rural places. Um, one thing I we have experienced is that our military, our veterans, they're incredibly diverse. They are men, they are women, they are black, they are white, they are Hispanic. Many of them, English is not their first language. They are transgender. They are everything that you can imagine about America. This is our military. And so Black Box, understanding um, the meeting people, hearing their stories, hearing their experience, and allowing them to tell uh, their version of the, this military story is, is, it's a really powerful thing, not just for them, but for us as well. This is to talk about the question of guiding principles and the values of dance and movement and how I, I hold them um, in our work, but also as the artistic director of Black Box Dance Theater. And so I, Black Box itself is very intentional of, you know, who, who is in the room, it matters who's dancing, and the populations that we do work with. So we look to uh, attract and support uh, dance artists who um, maybe are of unlike mind or unlike body. Uh, since we do so much work with the military, one of our founding members, I have my military story and my background, but he is a veteran, not just a uh, army veteran, but also combat wounded and 100% disabled. We have people in our company who English is not their first language. And uh, still, um, we are committed to uh, finding and uh, attracting uh, people who have the same values of us, who believe deeply in modern dance and the transformative power of dance in the world. Um, we do this by paying our artists for everything, for rehearsal, for performances, for the work that they do. Uh, this is why we have very little administrative support valuing the artists so we can bring uh, it's the, the equity. It's just, it's not just to uh, say that artists who can afford to, to, to create are allowed to. So we are very committed to paying the artists. In the early days of Black Box, I remember coming into rehearsal one time with a story I had just heard, like on NPR or something. <laughs> and it was about a patron who came up to Handel after the very first performance of the Messiah, and he congratulated him on the excellent entertainment. And Handel kind of said, oh, I, I should be sorry if I only entertained them. I wish to make them better. Everyone in the circle Uh, took a breath because we knew it was true. It was true for why we were there and why we want to continue to be there. Um, we believe in the healing and transformative power of dance because we've seen it. We've been a part of it. It's been a part of our work. Uh, one of the ways that we talk about our work, we say it's, uh, we say modern dance is American dance. It's built on the two greatest values that we believe in in America. One is the freedom of speech that everyone has a unique story that is true and honest and worthy to be um, heard and, and, and really held. The other is um, equality, that it matters who's dancing, you know, that we all, it's our birthright to dance. So I'm gonna try to tell you about the Patriot Project. It's something we've been working for a few years. It grew out of those two hour workshops we were doing with the active duty, uh, we thought, what if we had more than two hours? What if we had two months? What if we had two years? What if instead of one small group, we worked across our state? So the North Carolina Arts Council supported us in creating an evening length work where we would travel to different cities and in each place invite military families, veterans, active duty into conversations about these issues. And in many of the cities, they actually performed alongside of us. I remember our first was in Asheville and there was a group of very old Vietnam veterans. And uh, they, they said, we'll tell you our stories. And by the end of the week, they were performing on stage and so much so that they even drove across the state to be in some of the other performances. It was powerful beyond our best expectations. A film crew out in LA 
uh, heard about this and we're doing a documentary about transformative power of the arts in America and um, asked if there was any way we could do one more. I knew I could do one more Patriot because at this point all of the veterans were in. They recognized the power of their voice and their story. The only problem is <laughs> it's about the transformative power of the art and I didn't feel it was true to our mission to just keep going with what I knew would be beautiful and powerful. So I called up one of those Friday fellows and somehow we were invited by a judge to come to the Veterans Treatment Court and meet a group of uh, veterans who were going through a, a program. Uh, many of them are suffering from addiction uh, related to PTSD and their, their service. And if they complete this program, they'll have their charges dropped. Uh, I was guaranteed that uh, none of them would show up, but we went anyway. I remember Alfredo and I drove uh, four hours to make it to a 10 minute meeting because we knew that was the only chance we would have. They all came, they all performed. It's been to today, one of the most powerful performance I've been a part of. What we thought was the end, it was actually the beginning. Um, so that group of uh, guys from the treatment court along with our older veterans have been meeting every Wednesday for the year. And we just found out we got funding for a, a whole nother project next year with two shows. Um, one of the men who is working with us told us he'd been living in the woods for 40 years and this was his opportunity to connect back to society. Another one um, is I used for a reference for this application, so I hope you get to talk with Roy. Thank you.